This paper is done in close collaboration with Jorgos Canelos and Thomas Godron from the European Federal Bank. First, explainable AI. So explainable, explainable AI has been hyped in recent years. When we see that understanding a decision, it's a requisite to detect in potential bias. So in, in recent times, there has been um, many publications about explainable AI. It has appeared in almost every Congress and conference. There are papers that present the term of explainable AI in a quasi-mathematical way, but do we have such a mathematical understanding or formulation of explainable AI? Some other authors have found the, um, the topic to be, uh, to have its own limitations. And we have found two potential limitations. One is in evaluation. Explainable AI lacks a rigorous definition of evaluation methods. How can we evaluate the explainable AI? Is there a common benchmarking? Do we have really good metrics that we need to optimize? Second, generic. Some of the methods introduced around are really generic. We don't know how useful are they in use cases. Do they, are they created for a particular audience or just in general? So after seeing these two potential limitations, we try to apply our experience in central banking to, to try to deliver a classification of explainable AI needs that arose during our experience. For that, in our paper, we present two use cases. One is the outlier detection for the central securities database. What is the central securities database? It's like one of the biggest databases of the world, and it has securities for all the countries of the world. It gets updated daily by the uh, private data providers and other central banks that give, send us the data. So when the data is sent to us, we, the first step is identify outliers. So which is wrong or which, the, which data is right? So um, once we identify outliers, we need to identify which field is incorrect. So in order to make um, actionable knowledge, we need to see how can we correct the data in order to ensure that the data is the half of the highest quality. The next application that we present in the paper is the plausibility checks for supervisory banking data system. So in this application, the goal is to discover new novel dependency for banking supervision. And once we do that, we need to identify what are the anomalous values. Both use case us to find some common explainable needs that we will now present. So where do we need an explanation? We found here <clears throat> two different types of, we separated here two different types, the users who, need some, who can need a potential explanation and the different classification of explainable AI needs. First, you, explainable AI user profiling, who can require an explanation? We found here four different types of users. First, data scientists, they are the most well-known type of user they, are, they have a high technical expertise. They tend to have um, knowledge in mathematics, computer science, and software development. But they do not understand um, the business. They don't understand the economics. So the explanations that they are finding, they look are much more technical than business. The, on the other side, we have business experts who have a high business expertise. They are economics, full trained economists from the central bank and for other central systems that they know a lot, about the, a lot about economics, but they don't know about mathematics, computer science, and software develop, development. So it's kind of explanations that we can give to them. They cannot be highly technical. Then we have high stick decision managers. They are normally, upper management, senior management, and they are the one who take the decision of um, moving the machine learning model to production. They are not looking to low granularity explanations. They are looking more in terms of assessing the potential risk and impact of the learning solution. Then finally, we have the users. There's a high variation in the profiles because the, our data is public. You can access the data of the European Federal Bank in as a public user. 
most of even though it's public, most of the users are business experts. They are other economists that they want to see the data and do an analysis based on the data. So the kind of explanation has to be highly, highly varied. Then now we are gonna go and classify different explainable AI needs. When do we need an explanation in a use case of the European Central Bank? <clears throat> we have found four different types of common explainable AI needs. First is building trust. Trust that is a common theme between machine learning applications. We here, we see the four different types of users and we try to build trust for the four of them. So different users require different explanations and with different tools. First, for the data scientists, we found that we need to do model debugging, like the kind of explanations that they have, that they encounter during, are doing, during the modeling process. They are looking that meaningful features are selected by the machine learning model and that um, the model is not, and doesn't have data leakage and the, the performance that they expect, they want that the performance when the deployed version is, it's high, it's very high. On the other hand, the business expert, they have economic knowledge, they have business knowledge, they have domain knowledge. And what they're expecting is that the machine learning model behaves in the way they expect. They expect with their prior knowledge. So when they look at the situation, they need to understand what's going on and how are the decisions being made. Now, high stake decision makers. They are looking at the machine learning applications in terms of efficiency versus, versus risk. They don't, they don't need to know about how what's the exactly economic behavior or the exactly mathematical behavior. They wanna look at the trade-off. They wanna see what are they improving? What is the department improving if they deploy this? And then the risk. When we do automatic decision-making, there is a high chance, there are chances that the application doesn't go so right and they might be the ones accountable for this. So we need to ensure that they trust the system in a way that they understand the risk that they are going on. On the other hand, we have end users. We found them that they are the ones that use actually our data. So they are expecting the data to be consistent, clear, and transparent. So if they see something in the real life, they expect it to happen in, in the data, they want to see. And if it's not, why? One example is the last pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. We expected users to see that the securities of several countries were dropping, changing, or increasing. So what happens if they don't see this? They need an explanation of why this, this process is not happening. Second, we have gaining knowledge. And this is a case for a supervisor banking case. High machine learning per performance is not all. We said there are cases that we need to gain knowledge. We need to know more. So in our case, we need to identify functional dependencies. We need to look at the data and find new things. We need to find a new patterns in the data, new insights that deliver new, more information. On the other hand, also the business experts are looking to gaining insights. Here we have this open question is, how should we evaluate knowledge? We detect here a potential source of bias. Since when data is biased, the model is biased. And we see that there is a likely, is that the, the information that the knowledge that we're gaining is again highly biased here. So this is an open question of research that we, we have here. How should we evaluate gaining knowledge? And how should we avoid, how should, how should we look for potential bias in, the, in gaining knowledge? Third, we have model monitoring. We see two different ways to go here. First is distribution shift. What is distribution shift? Is what one between training and test, the distributions are different. So when you deploy the machine learning model, the test distribution changes. This is one of the main sources of model deterioration. In this graph, you can see the, um, the feature contribution of one, one feature. In the y-axis, you can see the sharp value. And the x-axis, you, you can see the time production rounds. So as time goes by, you can see that the contribution of this feature is changing. What does this mean? This means that the test data set is changing and distribution shift is happening. This is highly related to model the, uh, performance degradation. 
this is something we need to explain, we need to understand and priorly detect before something goes out. Then, in the other hand, we have changes in explanation. <clears throat> Data is not a static, it evolves, and so does the model. So an explanation for a certain instance today, for the instance xi, it can be different for in, for in a year from the same instance. This, it's a, main, it's a very big problem in order to in, um, ensure trust in our machine learning systems. How can we, Con, how can we feel confident with a machine learning system with the same, when we try to explain it every time we get different types of explanation? Finally, we have actionable insights. So in Montcentland Securities case, we have the problem of our identifying an outlier. What can we change so the data is no longer an outlier? In our use case, we use a decision tree. So you can see that changing just one feature here in the decision tree graph, it gets from one leaf to another. So this can be seen as a counterfactual explanations. And we wanted to, the counterfactuals to be um, actionable. <clears throat> and in order to be actionable, we need to make sure that the suggestions by the machine learning model are feasible, feasible and plausible. So then the business expert can deliver insight using this type of explanation. So that's all for our work to now. Um, <clears throat> as conclusions in this work, in this paper, we have tried to identify um, the different type of users that can require an explanation during our, um, during our problems. Um, we have classified the explainable AI needs that arose during our experience in the case of central banking. We, exp we hope that this kind of um, <clears throat> analysis help us other researchers to identify better explanation methods, identify potential bias, and with this, identify research gaps that help the field to move forward. <clears throat> As further work, we, we are expecting to extend our work to more, um, to more use cases, and with these more use cases, we can enrich our vision of explainable AI and hopefully redefine our classification of explainable AI needs. So that's all. Thanks for listening. So if you want to have some questions and answers now,